Zero tier, every area networking. Radically simplify your network with a virtual networking layer that works the same everywhere. Try zero tier for free, pre-order the zero tier edge. Okay, that sounds good. And it does say down here, zero tier delivers the capabilities of VPN, SDN, SD-WAN in a single system. Manage all your connected resources across both local and wide area networks as if the whole world is a single data center. And that's great marketing speak, but I've been playing with this and I'm really impressed with it because it actually does the things that the uh, marketing words here say. And then top that off because I know you're saying, yeah, there's solutions out there that do those things and SD-WAN solutions and such, but I don't know of any of them that are open source. This one is. And that's part of what got my attention was looking for some open source SD-WAN solutions. But then when I dug deeper, I was really fascinated what they came up with as this is a little different than some of the other solutions I've seen and it works really, really well. So what is zero tier and what would you use it for? So your typical VPN is to connect two points and then route the network between them. Zero tier works and solves the problem of being able to share resources across separate networks or uh, separate locations in a different way. It adds essentially another network adapter to the device and then another network adapter to the other device. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a application server, a file server, and you want to share that with other people who are not on the same network as you. There's a lot of different methodologies to do this, but Zero Tiers is rather clever because you can load and it even has support for devices such as Synology, but uh, Windows, Linux, Android, Mac, Apple, iOS. It has a wide, wide range of device support, even Raspberry Pis. You load this second network address, and then the other network address is in the same range on the other devices, and then you use whatever tools you want to share the network. It's not routing, it's the same network. So that's really interesting. I'm gonna show you how this works here in just a second, but I just want to touch on, and I won't be covering it for this particular video, the zero tier edge is a box that they have because you can do this. You can build your own box or they were shipping one, which they're sold out on right now because uh, it was a pre-order and part of a Kickstarter for some funding. Zero tier can also do layer two networking and bridge devices via layer two. Like I said, it's going to go out of the scope, but it is within the capabilities of zero tier. Now you're probably wondering how much does it cost? What is zero tier cost being that it's open source? Well, they have an interesting business model. So you get your up to 100 devices for free. And yes, I know you could just get the source code and completely spin this yourself. This is all on GitHub. But what they have, and I'll explain here shortly, is a zero tier series of servers running in the cloud that they maintain for you. This makes it very, very easy to get started. You don't have to compile any code or anything like that. But yes, you can completely run this for free and never have to pay anything and run all your own servers and host this in your own cloud. It is completely possible to do so. Uh, but I gotta admit, their pricing for getting set up in up to 100 devices for free, if you're a home user and wanna share with a few friends or even people have set this up as a gaming server because it creates extra network adapters on you know, Windows devices or Linux devices, up to 100 people playing on the same network for free is not bad. Basic plan, $29 a month. You get unlimited networks and support tickets. Then they have professional. And then they have, if you want to contact them and talk about enterprise deals, uh, as I understand, they have some companies that have worked out deals with them to embed this in other products as part of other solutions. Uh, in, they're flexible on that, so you can contact them for special pricing. But of course, like I said, it's all open source. Uh, what you're getting is, and even with the 100 devices, the zero tier cloud server for how all this works. So let's go and I did some diagrams to kind of explain it and then we'll jump into the deeper details to show it in action. So I made this really, really basic to kind of give you an idea how this works. So you have your firewall in location one, firewall location two, your zero tier client here and a zero tier client here. And we want both these clients to talk to each other. In a typical, as I stated, like VPN situation, you would have to have the firewalls configured or at least one of the devices configured and then to accept the connection over here and you'd have to know the IP addresses. What zero T is doing is what's referred to as UDP hole punch and they hole punch the data stream. Now, the entire zero tier system is completely encrypted. So they don't see any of the data. And 
you have to do this hole punch in a very unique way. And if you're familiar with how UDP works, basically with the UDP stream, as long as you're continually sending a few packets about every 120 seconds, it will keep these two clients alive and keep this extra network adapter alive. Now, how does that work? Well, when you fire up a zero tier client on either side and you join it to your virtual network, which we'll get to shortly here, it takes less than 60 seconds. I've seen them connect in about 30 seconds and the clients start communicating. So at first what happens is the data gets relayed. And as I said, all the data is encrypted. So even though it's being relayed through your zero tier servers or through zero tier servers, it doesn't pass any data they can see. The only thing they will know is the IP addresses of each firewall location. They will be able to have visibility to that because there's certain metadata they need in order to get this routed. So your data encrypted is passing through. And of course, you could always double encrypt and encrypt the protocol you're sending across the data. Just throwing it out there because it all works in standard TCP IP. Uh, it's just an extra network adapter. But it first starts relaying the data. Then it tries to determine the zero to your servers and the zero to your clients work together to see if normal NAT traversal works. And in the majority of the time, it does. Uh, any standard, and I'm going to use PFSense as an example because I have some PFSense boxes that this is running through you have to change nothing, no port forwards, no anything. Just the out of the box configuration of most home routers or even a lot of business routers. Now, if they are blocking UDP and they're locking down so you can only use very specific TCP ports, yes, it'll force itself into relay mode, which is obviously the slowest mode. Because if you relay everything through the servers, there are some limitations. It has to get up to the cloud, it has to pop through however many hops this is. but when you do it this way and it realizes that both devices can talk to each other through a UDP hole punch, you get full speed between this firewall and this firewall and it doesn't need to zero to your servers anymore other than to maintain. Now, as these servers move, once a connection is established, if perhaps this is a laptop and it wanders to a new location, it constantly is updating and constantly contacting the zero to your server. Now, you notice I called this the zero tier planet server. They have an interesting nomenclature for how they name things. So you use the planet servers, and as this is kind of playing into that, the whole world is your data center. There's only one planet, so there's only one zero tier server. And these are hard, your zero tier clients are hard coded to contact them. But if you had another server, your own server, they refer to those as moons. And you can then add these moons uh, to your zero tier client list and push that data down to them. And then they will in turn contact them constantly because you have to have them at fixed positions so they know where they're at. And then they can be some of the coordinating. And once again, if you spun this yourself with didn't want to use a zero tier servers at all, you'd have to establish your own static IP in the cloud where the moon would live and that would be able to contact these. So they've kind of thought this out for people who don't want to use their servers. But like I said, for $29 a month, you get unlimited networks. It's really, really reasonable uh, way to do this. And back to the data speeds, one more interesting note is the clients are also aware if they're in the same area. So if we ended up with a client and it's on this network over here, they'll start talking to each other and bypass the firewall so they can speak to each other at an even faster speed than perhaps the internet connection between them. So I want to throw that out there. That's also something that they have in there. Is there some uh, local communication? It still talks through the firewall, but I've noticed you get better speed that way because it's reaching to the firewall and it can UDP hole punch essentially internally. So kind of a neat feature on there. Now, all this is very well documented. The encryption they use, everything is all open source. It's auditable. It's uh, very easy to read through. Well, if you understand how the, if you want to understand cryptography, but it's all documented. Uh, they do have great help documents. Now we're going to jump into how the zero tier networks looks like that I set up. So there's a whole lot of zero tier servers on the internet. They have them spread across all the different continents. Now, the nice thing about the way zero tier works by having, you know, European locations and uh, US locations is no matter where you are or where your devices are, there are always a reasonably fast connection to get to a local zero tier server to get the connection established so your devices join. So they're distributed around the internet. Now, because they're not relaying all the data, this is one of the secrets to them. A lot of your SD-WAN solutions want to relay all the data through their data center, which means a lot of bandwidth, which means a lot of expense. By zero tier, just coordinating and creating hole punches between all the different devices, 
it doesn't have to relay as much data. Hence, these servers remain fast, and there's quite a few of them online. And there's ways you can look and see what zero ter- servers are online. It's got an entire system, very similar model the way root servers work on the DNS. So there's a distributed model. So if any one server goes down, you don't lose connection. Now, I have a zero tier client at home. I have one behind our lab firewall. I have a couple behind our main firewall, but on separate networks from each other. And what zero tier is doing here, let me zoom in a little bit, this represents your standard internet going up here. But these red is the zero tier private network. And the private network we create is 10.147.18.0.24 slash 24. And even my Android phone I have on here. So the, there's an IP assigned to each one of these devices. Now, even though this one's at home, this one's here behind two firewalls just because for lab purposes, and these ones are on separate network and they don't have direct communication with each other, but they all have these secondary IP addresses assigned to them. So let's log in and show you how that looks. So here's a server I refer to as the dot three server because it is on one of our networks sending in a dot three. So when I do I have config, here's the I address 192.168.3.183, but here's at zero tier address 10.147.18.14. Now, how does that look? Let me pull the map back over here. That's this particular server right here. So there's its address. So here's another one, 192.168.50.171. And it has a zero tier address of 10.147.18.135. So I'll split the screen. This is just tmux sh root at 192.168.50.171. And we see its address here uh, that's on ETH1. And then we hear the zero tier adapter with the 10.35. Now, on this server, I cannot ping. 3.183. Server above is unreachable. But if we take the zero tier address here of this one, copy it, ping, completely reachable. Matter of fact, because it's just like any other address on that server, uh, root at, we can just SH right into it. Yes. And you can see we're in the dot three real chaser. Matter of fact, you'll watch the screen above it break because shut down dash R now. I'm just going to reboot it real quick. And you can see it's closed. So what it did was create these virtual IPs that are assigned to them. And these two networks, these are two separate virtual machines on two separate networks, and they don't have the ability to talk to each other because of the firewall rules on the separate networks. But through the zero tier system, it adds this extra IP address on each one and they have no problem communicating. So it's a really slick system for doing that, but how does it work in Windows? So let me show you real quick. So this is a virtual uh, Windows session I have right here. I spun up for this and you can see it has an address of 172.16.69.188. 172.16.691. So it's once again on a separate network again, but here's its zero tier address that's in the same range, 10.147.18.64, which means, so right here we see the connection to 10.147.18.14. So, oh. And we can ping it. And it works perfectly fine, but if we wanted to ping that other address, it's back up and running right now. Dot space in here. 3.183. I don't have access to that network, but I can see it and I can ping it because once again, it's added on there. Now, the nice thing is you do have a UI on both Android and on, uh, so you're doing it on a phone if you're, or if you're doing it on a a Windows machine, you can show networks, you can view the networks, you can see how they're on there. So a little bit easier to control uh, on Windows in terms of you don't have to deal with the command line, but the command lines are really simple. And we're going to show you how to add another one to the network and how you build these networks in general. So let me go ahead and close this window session. 
I'm going to bring up the zero tier configuration. So if you want to create a network, you simply start with create network. And it adds a weird name to it. So this one's apparently a romantic Oikinkaren. I don't know. We're going to start at the top though. So we can name this network test network. Oops. Uh, it turns orange when you type something and then lets it close later. Uh, let's when it changes color, that's when it's done saving. It's weird at first. There's no save button. It's just using the uh, fact that it realizes there's a change to change something. Next thing, access control, private or public. We're going to do this as a private network, but a public network means anyone with this network ID number can just join the network and automatically be adopted. Private means if you were to copy and paste this ID number and use it to join a network, well, you would end up uh, having to approve it later. And we're going to show you how to do an approval. Then you choose the network range you want. You can choose easy and you can just click one of these ranges and it will build the network out and essentially automatically DHCP these out uh, to the clients as they go on there. It also has IPv6. And then down here, if you want really specific flow rules, it does have an entire rule and flow and routing system you can do. Not to mention, you can also add and push route and destinations on there so you can create gateways and things like that. Like I said, it goes out of scope of this talk and this demonstration, but it has a lot of advanced features. Matter of fact, they list all kinds of different things you could do uh, when you're trying to flow stream and modify the stream or modify things by MAC address. It's, it's really kind of neat how that works on there. So we're going to go ahead and scroll this up. There's also, by the way, an API. So this can be automated even further if you wanted to. So let's go back to our zero tier, our LTS test site network. And don't worry, I know this is exposed. So someone may ask, I will be deleting this network. So if anyone tries to join it, it'll be broken. And it shows me right now that there's five on here already joined. So it's LTS test site, test for YouTube, set it to private. Here's that range we assigned to it, 10.147.18.0 slash 24. Auto assign for easy. And now this is where I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And the reason I did that was to hide all the public IP addresses of all the machines here. So here's all the different machines. Matter of fact, I'm going to delete this one because I've already removed it from the network because we're going to rejoin it. So currently, here's all the ones that are on network and off screen, so I don't have to spend time editing and blurring, is all the public IPs. Here's all the private IPs. And here's all the different things I called them. So my phone, I currently have it off, and I'm going to turn my phone on and show you how fast it connects. Phone is in my hand. I open up the zero tier app. And uh, it's like a little touch button just to turn it on. And we'll show you actually how fast zero tier will join even a phone. Uh, to the network. It seems to join the phone only slightly slower, but still within 30 seconds, this is going to update and be online and be pingable. I just got the online notice on my phone, so it's actually online, and this will refresh in just a second. But we can probably ping it already, so let's go ahead and ping and see if my phone is actually available. So we'll go back into one of the zero tier systems. Yep. Even though it hasn't refreshed over here just yet, my phone is available. This will catch up in a second, but that's how quick. I mean, it is in real time, no skips, no anything. That's how quick zero tier will connect right to a network. Now, at first, you're going to see a little bit of a high, the higher response times on the ping, and they're going to get faster because at first it's relaying the data, and it goes from relaying the data to then... Uh, doing the hole punch in there. And I don't know if that's when it says online once it decides the hole punch is on there, but uh, the phone's in my office and this 50 dot network is mine, uh, public IP range, it's just off screen. So it's online and matter of fact, now that it changed online, let's see if the ping times go down any. They did. So it went from 420, 130, 56 to, you know, 176, okay, they're still in the, 100s and 200s, but you kind of get the idea for running an Android phone that the zero tier works perfectly fine here. Let's talk about how do we add something to the zero tier. So let me close all these out. Now I have a DigitalOcean box right here. It's called DigitalOcean Zero Tier. It's got a public IP address of 142.93.127.159. So we're going to log into that.
So we do an IF config, and you can see here's that public IP address, 142.93.127.159. This is a VLAN that is set up from uh, DigitalOcean, so imagine it's for some backend access right here. So you can ignore that one where it says E0, but we have not installed zero tier on the system, and that's what we're going to do now is go ahead, download zero tier, and run the installer. Now, for those of us that are being lazy like myself, uh, you can do the lazy admin post and just copy and paste it right off their website to install. Windows and everything just has an MSI installer. It's listed in the iOS and Android app store uh, to install this. So it's really easy to set up on any of the devices you want. And they also have QNAP and Synology in here as well. So if you want to connect those uh, for sharing, it's just a download. So curl-s install zero tier, pipe it through bash. I took out sudo because we're running his root. All right, success, zero tier done, we're installed. So now what? Scroll up here to the top. We're gonna copy this here. And we're gonna do zero tier, CLI, join, paste in the network, enter. It joined, that was it. Windows, you just paste that same network in through the Windows uh, UI, simple enough. And we're gonna wait a second here. We're gonna watch for this to show up. And while we're waiting, we will do this. We will do zero here, CLI. Cool, it's online. So we're just waiting on it to show up in the list over here. Hey, there it is. Now, do you see how there's little red dots and there's no check mark? All we have to do to join this in a network. So if you, uh, you the user watching this on YouTube right now, if you were to take that in there, I, you wouldn't join my network automatically unless it was set to public. If you set these to public, anyone with that address can just join automatically. So now I have to just check the box and now it's joined. And, uh, oops, D-I-G-I-T-A-L, DigitalOcean. Done. So now that's the DigitalOcean server. It's online. It's joined. We can go status here. If you go status, I believe it's dash J. And you can see like more details. So it outputs a JSON file. So if you want to script this and uh, go further with it, you could. Or we're going to go now to ifconfig and show you how it looks. So here's that public IP address on ETH1. This is still the same. Here's that extra adapter. 10.147.198, just like we see here. It's online. And that means I should be able to perfectly ping. Well, matter of fact, let's just log into it. H root at. And I'm logged right in. It's that simple. So it's I, pretty ingenious how they put this together. The fact that it works as a standard network adapter on both Windows and on uh, Linux and other devices uh, makes it really easy because you don't have to play with any routing or anything. These are all, from a basic setup standpoint, on the same network. So they can talk to each other just as if they're on the same network, even though this digital ocean server is you know, in the public IP space, it now has local uh, access to that IP address that are all shared across there. So give zero tier a try. Like I said, nothing to sign up. Uh, 100 networks for free without paying. So you can really put this to the test. I've done speed testing on it as it because it uses UDP. Um, it seems to go quite fast. I have no problem fully saturating my 150 meg circuit on here. And when I was doing some local testing, I seen it hit as much as 500 and 600 looping through. It doesn't seem to have much overhead or anything like that. And you do have really low latency and really low ping times on it. Because right now I'm looped out through the DigitalOcean server back down here, but I can run commands and everything in real time, even though I'm looped out over the zero tier back into my own network, I was pretty fine. Like I said, it's not like a standard VPN. It's a little bit different concept because it's actually adding these extra IP addresses on there. But if you have a server you want to share, you just load it, add it. Um, one of my videos I'll probably do following up on this is going to be, I want to do some testing to how well it works with Synology and some other devices. But uh, like I said, I'm really impressed with it. And I'm really looking at it from a management standpoint uh, because of the fact that I can, if I have something I want my phone to have access to, um, being able just to slide the button, it's easier than a VPN. And then your phone is on whatever local network. And by the way, if you want, you can do this. Let's go back. 
We're going to make this one a 192 network here. And we're going to go and so we're on the DigitalOcean zero tier. So we'll do zero CLI. And we can join it to more than one network. Let's put DO for DigitalOcean. IF config. Now we have two zero tier adapters. So yes, it, in case anyone was wondering, uh, you can keep adding. I don't know what the limit is, but you can have one system that is tied into multiple zero tier networks on different ranges. So this one has a 192 range. This one has a 10 range. And you just choose that through the network settings up here. So like I said, give zero tier a try. I'm really impressed with it. It's a really slick system and it's open source. So you can actually see all the code and we understand that it's not some magic sauce uh, and it's very auditable, very secure. The security and everything looks really tight. They've put a lot of thought into it and they didn't just start this project yesterday. This has been around for a couple of years um, and gaining some popularity. I just can't believe I didn't know about it sooner. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.